Evansville with a six-point lead early. Now a three-point lead. Four. And North Carolina can start getting ready for Duke. North Carolina's last 11 points have come at the free throw line in this game, and they're up by four. And now Pat Sullivan says Dean Smith wants a timeout. He wants to discuss what they're going to do in the last 12.4. I'll tell you really what Carolina wants to be able to do is, is shadow them, but certainly they don't want to foul. All right, we'll take this opportunity to check in with Chris. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> We've, got some, uh, We've got some action to tell you about. Jim Belvano on his feet screaming because Arizona it. and USC have just concluded a thriller in Los Angeles. USC has just won the game. We'll show you how they won it in just a minute, but 70 to 69. Calm down, Jim. We're going to talk about it in just a second. The Trojans winning their 23rd game of the year, 70 to 69. Arizona had taken a one-point lead. Arizona, or USC had one final possession, and they won it on the shot. Meanwhile, the MCC championship game, Evansville leading Butler 11 to 6. We'll get you back after this game when the uh, ACC game concludes. You watch the end of that Arizona USC, Jim. <laughs> I apologize, but I mean, USC went for the last shot, lost the ball, and then got it out, missed the shot, and with it can't be more than a tenth of a second on the clock, as I said, it went in. It went in. And it USC incredible. wins. Still a shot at a share of the Pac 10 title if UCLA should somehow lose at home to Arizona State. Well, they need some help, but they beat uh, US UCLA twice this year. We've often said, Jimmy and I have been campaigning for George Ravley to uh. get a five-year deal. That Mike McGee, the AD, has got to make it so tough for him to leave. He definitely is great with young people. All right, back to the ACC now. We'll come back and keep you posted on Championship okay. Week. 12.4 seconds to go. North Carolina by four, and the ball. Phelps going for the hoop. Missed it, but he's fouled and ran three seconds off the clock. Thank you. Well, you want a shadow, and certainly you wanted everything to be in front of you. Charlie Waters stepped late on Derek Phelps. Nice job again by Carolina setting up a play to not only get the ball in bounds, but to get it to the basket. Dean Smith just stood up after that play and put his palms up to the air like, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is dribble the ball. And everybody turned around and looked at him and shook their heads. Yes. That's got to be the frustrating thing about coaching. You say something on the sideline, five kids go out on the floor and do just the opposite of what you just told them. But, you know, if you got a chance for a layup, uh, you know, obviously he was going to get hammered. And maybe, you know, in a situation like that, he should have realized how close Ward was to him. But if you see the basket in a wide open lane, you know, that's it. That's instinct. But if you don't listen to Dean, who you can listen to? 78-73. This one is over with 9.2 seconds left. Phelps with a miss. Reese with a rebound. Well, it, it is over now, especially with Florida State falling asleep at the switch once again. You know, failure to block out two times. Uh, the uh, earlier in the first half, the shot clock fiasco. And now the timeout situation. It's just a learning process for these guys. This is a tournament that they've never seen before. And it's... Uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do well for them next year, as you mentioned, with the young team that they right. have. Well, they came in here very confident. Why not? They went through their first ACC season 11-5. and five. They had swept Carolina and just played some outstanding basketball. But they will lose this one. They're down by 5, 78, 73, six and a half seconds left. And Reese at the free throw line. Carolina has broken more hearts in this tournament than anybody else. And uh, you can't say enough about the way they control their tempo of this basketball game. It you was know, super. Florida State would have loved to have gotten it in the 90s and the 100s, and Carolina came back. They found their big defense. And now we'll see if they can do it again against number one Duke, a team they beat earlier this year and came close to beating the second time they played if they split the regular season series. They're going to have to do much of the same thing they did today. Three-pointer by Sura as the game comes to an end. North Carolina, after being beaten twice during the regular season, wins it 80-76 over Florida State.
George Lynch and Hubert Davis with marvelous performances. For Len Elmore, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's go back to Chris Fowler. All right, Mike, so the Tar Heels, the defending champs in the ACC tournament, into the championship game against Duke, 1 o'clock Eastern time right here on ESPN. It's the rubber game. They split in the regular season. Told you about that great finish that Jim was up and screaming about, Arizona and USC. Arizona had a one-point lead in the final seconds as the Trojans would get the ball. They take it in, and Dwayne Cooper misses the shot at the wild scramble. Rodney Chapman will come up with the ball just before the clock expires. He hits the shot. Pandemonium at the sports arena and a pair of losses for Arizona. Yes, George Raveling, you can sprint off the court and you still have an outside shot at a share of the Pac-10 title should UCLA lose. Meanwhile, in the Big East, the semifinal game between the Hoyas and the Redmen are in the final minute now in Georgetown, a 62-55 game. The winner, of course, moves on to take on Syracuse in the final and in the Big Eight for the right to play Kansas in the championship game, 46-37 Oklahoma State leaving, uh, leading in a low-scoring game with 8.17 to go. Now we're going to the Midwestern Collegiate Conference Championship game. Game four of seven. It's Butler and Evansville. Dave Voloshin and Jim Spinarco have the call. See you at halftime with more. Thank you, Chris. We've got uh, a dandy. At least it promises to be that way between the top two teams in the MCC. But Evansville is having their way early. They jumped out 6 nothing, and that bucket makes it 25-14. The Aces controlling tempo. Jim Spinarco, they're controlling everything. They really are. And I think just the start, coming out in that first two minutes, they really made the statement early that they were going to play aggressive basketball. Butler responded a little bit in the four or five minute mark, but still have a long way to go to get it really rolling for them. Taylor couldn't handle it. Butler, the top offensive team in this league. And we take a look at why they're the best offensive team. All you gotta say is Darren Archbold. He was the MVP of the league two years ago, 1,600 career points. And there is the, this year's top player, a sophomore. His name is Parrish Casebeer. He's already got 10 points in this game. He's been terrific. Well, Archbold with seven right now had a good start also, but when he was on the bench there for that last minute, you could really tell the Butler team fell apart just a little bit, not really getting good shots. They need him on the floor for most of the night. This is the backup point guard in now Heisel. And here is uh, Hokenauer who can shoot. It won't go. And Butler needs something in a hurry down by 11. Even though it didn't go down, still a good, good shot, though, because with Case Beer roaming along the baseline and looking for the post up, that'll free him up a little bit to roam down below. He saw the nice run by the Aces. There's a nice move, but it wouldn't go for Michael Wilson, who's had a great tournament so far. Nice pull up. Elkins with good position on the knee. Good run by Evansville. First two guys down the floor and pulled the defense right underneath the basket with them. Heisel with six, and he's a backup, and it's a 14-point lead. Evansville has doubled Butler in Cincinnati. You want to save some money? Recycle with the Muse Snapper. You want to save yourself some time? Recycle with the Muse Snapper. You want to do your part in protecting the environment? Recycle with the Muse Snapper. Want to mow now with no payments till October 1992? Recycle with the Muse Snapper. From Muse Outdoor Power Equipment on Congress behind Eastland Mall. Hey, I said recycle, not motorcycle. Some guys never get it right. One of the most devastating of injuries is that to the spinal cord. Victims of serious spinal cord injuries are usually faced with staggering medical bills, significantly impaired earning capacity, and their quality of life is never the same. The attorneys at Robert John & Associates utilize experts to determine future needs. If you or a loved one are one of the unfortunate victims of a spinal cord injury, call us at Robert John & Associates for a free consultation. Still more outstanding championship basketball excitement on ESPN. The National Invitation Tournament tips off with a live triple header. Wednesday night starting at 7.30 Eastern only on ESPN. See who gets invited to the big dance. Join John Saunders, Jim Valvano, and Dick Vitale on ESPN's hour-long NCAA selection special. Sunday night live on ESPN. 
Welcome back to Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati. Evansville has hit six of their last seven shots, and they have taken a big lead on Butler. The Aces got here with one win last night against Loyola. It was impressive. Butler beat Detroit, beat Xavier very nicely indeed, and uh, that's how they get here. In the regular season, Evansville was a winner in both of the games, but they were both close. Five and nine, and the nine was really not the way it went. It was tied with a minute and a half to go. From a player perspective, sometimes when you go into a game, the coaches worry about the complacency setting in after you've beaten the team twice. Sure does look like Evansville has the confidence, though, early going. Okinawa, who's a real hard-nosed young man, picks up the foul. That's his first. It is the sixth team foul on Evansville. Everybody with one. Their top six players with one. The good news for Butler is they're the best offensive team in the league, but the bad news is Evansville's the top defensive team. And I think now, especially with Hoopman on the floor with his size, Evansville tries to funnel everything into him in the lane, and you have to keep looking for the big guy. There's a good example of it right there. Archibald wouldn't go. Look at the fight inside. Gold. He got hacked. It's on Elkins. Elkins with the reach in right there. See, that's where you have to remember your personnel behind you. Hoop and a big guy standing right behind them at 7-1. That's where you can't reach in. As a small guy on the floor, you have to say, lay back and let the big guy do the intimidating. And, uh, and he can intimidate you. Oh. 71 blocks this year. He's in the top 20 in blocks in the country. Plus, it's like that stat football, the hurries you know, for quarterbacks when they're being pressured. Well, he has hurries right there all night long so far. He's hurried a few shots. Wade Galt couldn't find the range. Still 28-14. Hootman is a great story. He's from Munich, Germany. Went to high school in Grand Rapids and decided to go to Evansville because Jim Cruz knew how to coach German centers. Uwe Blob. Uwe Blob in Indiana. That's right. Both the coaches, by the way, here very young, 37 years old. Cruz, coach of the year in the MCC, and his counterpart, Barry Collier. This where Butler has to start doing it from the defensive end, though. Look at we go inside. They can be patient. Here's K Spear. He can hit from everywhere, and there's a three, and he's got 13 in this game. He had 31 in the first half against Notre Dame, 41 for the game. He outscored Notre Dame in the first half in their win last couple of weeks ago. And the thing about him is that, you know, when you have a big-time player, you like to see him get his shot off. He had two good looks at the basket from the three-point stripe. There's another big player. I think he's going to have to look to shoot a little bit more frequently. That was one they needed. So Archibald now has 10. And the charge. Well, here's the baseline. Let's see if there's a little movement stepping in. Yeah, I think that should have gone the other way. That's a block with the legs sticking out first. Second on the player of the year in the conference, their leading scorer, their leading rebounder. He's, some say, like Adrian Dantley, some say like Charles Barkley. Either way you look at it, that's not too bad. Uh, I don't mind being in that company at all. A lot of tradition between those two teams. And there's the three by Jermaine Geis. Then one call down the defensive end. That's a big call. Even though we're still early in this ball game, the fact that it went against Evansville, Butler comes down and takes advantage of it. 16-point lead, a race to just the 10, but there's the three. Playing around the world, it looks like. Now he's just standing out there firing away. Butler better come out, attack, and force him to put it on the floor. He's had three threes in the game already. As soon as we got on television, he started to light it up. Renz with a nice pick, and Geis for three. Not this time. And there's the travel by the freshman Reed Jackson. He's on the all-newcomer team to the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. He's a hard-nosed young man, too. He's shuffling away there on that one. Georgetown ahead of St. John's now. What a battle in the Big East. Syracuse already has made it into the finals there. Nice in a double team. That means Wilson's wide open. Uh-uh. He hit him yesterday. Look at golf fight. No, and Hoopman above everybody couldn't hold on. Last touch by who? Butler. Good hustle by Galt, but it goes to the Aces. It's a terrific effort overall. Archibald was there also going after the glass offensively. Barry Collier, very 
concerned, and there's Cruz, who looks even more concerned, even though his team up by 13. 6.40 to go in the first half. It's been a wild day on ESPN, championship week. Coming to a close in the next couple of days. That one won't go. So that's NBA stripe right there. Shot it fairly confidently and smoothly also. Brands can't find anything inside, so Wilson will try. And both two away. Brent's actually stepped in across the line there. Archibald wants it back. Good luck. Wilson with the penetration. And Wilson needs to come to life. His first two, he averages 10 and a half. Well, Wilson is very active, and what he'll do consistently is show you that ball. We just saw it twice. Freed himself up to get a little closer for the, the touch off the glass. Evansville jumped out 6-0. Then it was 12-6. Suddenly it was 28-14. That's when you joined us. Pokenauer times his man, and there's the double team. Look at him knock it out, and around the perimeter, and inside it goes. And the freshman Jackson's on the scoreboard. It's first deuce. Butler reacted, too, by going after Case Beer, running two guys out to the 15-foot range, but just by him putting that one or two dribbles down, he should be able to swing the ball around the perimeter. They set guys free. Nothing for him there. Good defense by Evansville. And they don't do a lot of the double teaming. They just get in your face. Well, the big guy's still parked in there, but you have to challenge big guys, pick it right at him, use the strength. There was nothing there for Archibald, and that's great defense by Kokono. He's right on top of it, right in the face. Here's the pull-up. You called it. Case here with 18 and a half, and the lead is 15. What makes that so effective, too, Dave, is the fact that he's buried three long ones. He's looking to take his long shot. Now he's pushing it right at you, and he pulls up. Tough guy to guard. He's showing why he is the best player in this conference. He's going head-to-head -head with the number two guy, Archibald. Kansas shows why they're the top seed in the Big Eight. Galt will take a seat. The thing about Case Beard that's so impressive, too, is the fact how many rebounds he picks up at his size. 6'3", just stays there all the time. That shot from Danny Allen just in the game, didn't even play last night, wasn't there. So Barry Collier trying to figure out what he can do. He's got two of his bigger guys on the bench now. Case Beer starting with a post-up position. They've got Archibald going now. We'll clear it out for him. He's got Hoop that he can give it to. That's a step. Yeah, he did. He, his feet seemed to come out from underneath him that time. He tried to make the quick move. Just indecision too much there. A couple of times he looked at Hoopman down on the blocks. The big guy was open. He should have just delivered it. If they double team the big guy down low, he gets it right back out on the wing. Right now it's just a touch over four minutes. Butler really has to be concerned with just trying to chop in a little bit into this lead. Archibald couldn't get it to go. A nice effort in there and the foul over the back on, I believe it'll be Danny Allen, which would be his first. Yep. It's on Tremaine Geis, and that's Tremaine's first. That the sixth team foul on Butler, Evansville with eight already, so the Bulldogs in the bonus situation if it arises. Four minutes even left to go in the first half. And Evansville coasting up 15 with the ball. It takes a little bit of pressure off them, too, because they've beaten this squad twice this year. They're out big early on. They can play a little bit more relaxed in a big championship game. Jackson with the tough move. Boy, he and Andy Elkins, both freshmen, don't play that way now. Well, they stepped up big last night, especially when Case Beard did not have a good night, just with six points. Barry Collier calls a timeout. His team down by their biggest margin. It's 17. It's college basketball's most exciting time. Smart takes the shot. Now you can enjoy the best of the NCAA's championship tournament in this amazing video, One Shining Moment. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video is packed with the biggest thrills the greatest players and the finest teams as they battle to experience that one shining moment. You'll be at courtside with the coaches. You'll feel the intensity as the suspense builds when the game is on the line. 18. 
Call this toll-free number and get out on the court for a thrilling 45 minutes of the best in college basketball, free from Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video and 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. You'll treasure college basketball's most memorable moments. And you'll catch all the miracles yet to come in Sports Illustrated. They say some people have more money than they know what to do with. I don't know those people. The ones I know want good value. Now at Subway, they can turn $1.49 into a six-inch cold cut combo. It's the kind of sandwich your mother would make if she was foolish enough to bake her own bread and spend half the day chopping fresh vegetables. She still couldn't beat our low price. If time were money, her sandwich would cost around $100. The price of a good sandwich just got lower. $1.49 for a limited time at Subway. More physical play in the Big 8 semi. The Cyclones and the Cowboys watch Justice Thigpen for Iowa State. A pop to the chops of Sean Sutton. Boom, the left jab, Sutton down, was taken out. He has not returned, but the Cowboys are pulling away by 16. Arizona USC, another look. The mad scramble, hands up one. Dwayne Cooper picks up the loose ball, misses the shot, but Rodney Chapman, look at the threes, 0-0.1, a tenth of a second. It counts. USC wins it 73, or 70 to 69. Back to Dave and Jim. We've got a bit of a runaway here, 40-23 Evansville. They've been terrific everywhere. They're hot from the outside, 17 of 25. Butler is 9 of 25. I'm Dave Veloshin along with Jim Spinarco. We're at Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, Ohio. Snowy outside, but my, has Evansville been hot in here. They put on a clinic. And also at the defensive end, are they putting on a clinic? That's what they really specialize. That one by Rutherford wouldn't go, and Case Beer. Terrific job right there, huh? keeping that pivot foot. He's really strong. They, you know, he's not that quick either. He's just uh, a strong guy, smart, gets position, doesn't leap high, but I guess he does leap, uh, leap with pretty quick timing. Yeah, he does, and he's also a pretty strong leap, but the body goes up, good motion, solid, pretty tough to knock him off balance. Plus, when he's hitting his outside shot, it makes him that much more difficult to stay with. Well, you think about Scott Treffler, who was uh, one of the premier guards in this league, probably the best point guard. He goes out with an ACL in the knee. That one goes into Hoopman. And the lead now, 42-23. Oh, my. This is not exactly what we expected, to be honest with you. Part of Butler's problem is also they're going to have to come up with some different types of traps, even though they don't employ that over the course of their season. Usually it's man-to-man -man into your face. And some double teaming, which is what they've tried to do on Case Beer, but nothing stopped him tonight. And that's because the perimeter has been doing very well from the outside. Some folks think that now at this level doesn't get physical, forget it. Look at how tough Jermaine Geis is. Ooh, man. That's about as tough a fall as you're going to see. He came back and played. He missed that free throw, but there's Relifer. And Wilson, they let him have it. He couldn't burn him. Hoopman knocks in to Relifer, and they call it on Relifer. And Hoopman moving around. Pretty good position. Even though he got knocked to the floor right there, he had established it early. That's the third on Katara Relifer, and a deep sigh of concern by Barry Collier. That's a great story. What a turnaround by Collier with his team. A couple of years ago, they were 6-22, and 22, 18 and 11 last year, 21 and 8 coming in today. He's really done a terrific job. This is where the poise of Evansville is going to be very, very difficult to get them to turn the basketball over because they're going to force Butler to force the action defensively. Well, you don't blame them. Oh, yeah. Use the clock up. They're in the driver's seat. This is a Big time lead here. Ten on the shot clock is poking oh, let it go. He was looking for Heisel, who's already hit a couple of three, and you saw the shot clock there was ticking down. What a young team this Evansville ball club is, too. They start two freshmen, two sophomores, one junior, the junior being Hootman, the star player, Case Beer, only a sophomore. And he, he looks pretty calm, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. And the luxury of having a big lead, putting him on the bench. They maintain this league. Lead rather you get a little extra break with the halftime coming up. Wilson had a big second half yesterday. That one was thrown away. Turnovers really haven't been a story here. It's been shooting and defense. Sure has. The thing about it with Butler, too, they 
get an unforced turnover there, and then they come back and hand it right back. Heisel, who uh, enters your picture, just talked with Jim Cruz, and he told him, take it slow and easy. Georgetown, the winner over St. John's. So it's Georgetown and Syracuse in the final. Georgetown is creeping along. Chris, Jim, and Dick get the break just a little bit. Poopman wisely kicks it out. Seven on the shot clock. Heisel, uh-uh, that one was a brick, and it was Archbold who comes down with it. Another long three-pointer, another NBA shot right there. Another almost picked up his fourth, and Wilson picks up the ball. Another offensive infraction against the Bulldogs of Butler. Even though it's the right call, and it's a tough call for Butler to absorb right now, the key thing is, though, that they're aggressively going into the pain area. When you're down as many as they are, good position, good step over. Hooper was even there for the help out. But Butler still has to take it into that pain area and make things happen, slow this clock down by getting to the free throw line. 11-2. The run now that Evansville has enjoyed over the last six minutes. That's a 27-point whatever as you watch that clock go down. Holden should be with a point ought to be. Big patient game right here. Down to 10. Under Evans will by 19, waiting for this last play, and it's Heisel. He got it! Well, nothing like giving yourself a big, big lift, even though they didn't need any more of a lift going in at halftime at the break. Excellent execution down the stretch for the last shot. The Aces have all the cards for sure. They're up over Butler by 22, and now let's go to Chris Fowler. All right, fellas, they might deal themselves into the tournament without winning this game, but they're taking no chances. They're up big. All right, coming back at halftime, Jim Valvano, Dick Patel, more screaming and yelling. Lots of highlights to show you from all the conference tournaments going on this afternoon. You want to be here. Now you can enjoy the drink that's been on every Russian space mission. Sputnik, made with 10% real beet juice and 20... Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and go... It'll start your day. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Center court with Andre Agassi versus David Wheaton. Nice shoot. Technical difficulty, the network feed. Tastes like a beer, cause it should, cause it's brewed like a beer, of course it's good. Have a couple, have a bunch, one for the road, three for lunch. Let's be perfectly clear, it's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Oduls. Oduls, the brew from Anheuser-Busch, with the alcohol naturally removed for real beer taste and only 70 calories. Every time, anywhere, it's what beer Drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer, oh Jules. ESPN's Championship Week is brought to you by the people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. They're back. Welcome back to halftime. Evansville up 22. A couple of great buzzer beaters to show you from this afternoon. But we're going to start in the Big A, the semifinal game, Iowa State and Oklahoma State for the right to get into the championship game and take on the Jayhawks. A slugfest. Both games at Kemper Arena this afternoon. Very physical games, and there were some casualties for all parties concerned. Rough day for the cameraman, too. Howard Eaton crashes into him. Then Darwin Alexander. Tough ball game. Buries the three. Alexander, one more time. Got to get out there and defend him. Ten first-half points for Alexander. And right now, it is uh, Oklahoma State leading Iowa State. Ready to move on into the uh, championship game to take on the Jayhawks. 64-54, 103 to play in that ballgame. Oklahoma and Kansas, the semifinal earlier this afternoon. And watch Greg Ostertag reject 
Jeff Webster, Rex Walters zigging and zagging through the center defense. He lays it in. Kansas let him get close, then pulled away to win it 85-67. 21 points for Walters. So it's Kansas and apparently Oklahoma State in the championship game tomorrow as we check out the bracket here. Fellas, quick thoughts on that game of Oklahoma State. We're going to assume they get in. Very quickly for me, Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, go KU. I've heard three, it before. Three words. Dick. Hey, no question about it. Love their backcourt. Superb backcourt with Walters and also with Jordan. Unbelievable combination. And if you think they're good this year, wait till next, next year. Preseason, my choice. Uno number one. Uno number one. Uno number school one. of redundancy. Okay, now to that great <laughs> Game in the SEC. Number 17, Alabama. Number 6, Arkansas. This was a great buzzer beater. These guys fled with Arkansas. Don't help out on defense. Stick with your man. They didn't do it, and it cost them. Alabama down by two points. James Robinson dishes off right there. Elliott Washington from Bradenton, Florida. Open for the three. Hits the shot. Arkansas could never get a shot off. Wimp Sanderson celebrating, and Alabama wins it 90 to 89 and move into the championship game against Kentucky. What about this? Interesting that LSU without Shaq doesn't get in, and Rick Pitino's smiling, Jim. Yeah, Kentucky's been pretty fortunate. Shaq, right? LSU without Shaq. Now they're going to play Alabama, a team they already beat, not Arkansas, a team that smacked them two times. 107-83. Kentucky humiliated Alabama the first time around it. Well, they shoot the three, and we know they shoot it well on most nights. I really think that today, if I had a vote for the coach of the year, I would go in the SEC with Ricky Pitino. Monty Kruger got it, got 16 wins, but this guy won 23-plus games, has done a phenomenal job, and he does have a great front court. Nash Burns is only legitimate dominant front court and player. Sometimes one of the hardest things to do is win when you're expected to win. I agree. Part of the country will see that championship game tomorrow on Championship Sunday, which starts with the ACC. North Carolina at Duke, 1 o'clock Eastern time. The rubber game. Then it'll be the Big 8 or the SEC championship game at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Depending on where you live, you'll see one of those two games. And then game number three tomorrow. We'll roll on and go out to the Big West and selection show at 6.30. Back with more halftime in a minute. Center court with Andre Agassi versus David Wheaton. <laughs> introduces the return of the Wild West. May I take your order? Yes, ma'am, I reckon you can. For a limited time, rustle up a saucy, sassy McRib. Or a Western Omelet McMuffin for breakfast with peppers, onions, and ham. Or try a satisfying 99-cent chicken fajitas or 99-cent breakfast burrito. Howdy, boys. What you want is what you get. Mind if I join you? At McDonald's today. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. Today, Tech Tread Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Welcome back to Championship Week. This afternoon at the Garden in the Big East, Syracuse got by Seton Hall, the top seed by four. The Hoyas hold off the Redmen. They'll meet the team split, each winning on the other's home floor in that final tomorrow afternoon. Told you about the ACC final tomorrow afternoon right here. The semifinal games, it was the old guard, North Carolina, all the history against the new kids. Florida State, the second seed in their first year in the conference. A battle of tempo. Dean Smith wants to keep it slow. He got burned early on by the fast-paced Florida State offense. But uh, some trouble for the uh, 
Tar Heels early. Hey, today what they did is they got back in transition. Team. All five guys were back, and look, they got the charge on Douglas Edwards. Things went right for the Heels today. Hubert Davis, the story on offense, knifes in, the tough shot, the acrobatic layup, and Pat Kennedy and the Seminoles, a great regular season, but they don't get to the final in the first year in the ACC tournament. 80-76 to 76 is the final. 28 points for Hubert Davis. They will take on Duke, as we told you. The Blue Devils just dismantled Georgia Tech. 89-76, to 76, the game not really that close, and they will take on the Tar Heels in the rubber game tomorrow. Arizona-USC, the tremendous finish. Arizona had a one-point lead. USC had the ball. They called a timeout. They diagrammed a play. This wasn't what they diagrammed, but it worked out. Let's go now to the final seconds. Yes, it does count, George Rattling. It's Rodney Chapman hitting the shot. But take a look after the wild scramble. Does he get it off in time? Yes. Freeze frame. The ball is out of his hands before it hits zero. USC wins it 70 to 69. Harold Miner has 21 points for the Trojans. In the Big Ten, we'll get to that in a second, but we want to talk about the Pac-10. Dick, Arizona loses at UCLA in the closing minutes, loses the heartbreaker to USC today. Pair of losses. Chris. Think about this. Unbelievable. They arrive in L.A. They arrive as the number two team in the nation 48 hours ago. And now they leave and go back to Tucson and they're number three in their conference. That's amazing. Two in the nation and now you're number three in your conference. Four lonely days in the brown L.A. haze. Is <laughs> oh, wait, don't lay that stuff on me, please. Time out, baby. <laughs> All right, we're going to take it back to, the, back to the Big Ten. No timeouts. No timeouts. It's 94-63. Ohio State just clobbers Minnesota. The Gophers maybe had a chance as a bubble team. Not after this. Clem Haskins' team beaten 94-63. Jim Jackson announcing before the game he will return for his senior year at Ohio State. Dick says he had it a month ago. Illinois and Michigan in the Big Ten, 68-59. Jalen Rose tosses in 22 points, also had three block shots as the Illini fall to 13-15 and, and lose any hope of an NIT bid while Michigan goes in at 20-8. and eight. Our halftime score, it's Evansville dominating the MCC championship game and trying to get a spot in the NCAA tournament 45 23 over Butler. In today's changing times, how do you know when enough is enough? Enough property coverage, liability limits, or life insurance coverage? As an independent broker, Heston can help answer that question with over 25 companies and with over 50 years of experience. Contact a company with enough experience to know when enough is enough. Heston Insurance Agency, with you every step of the way. We're talking to Bill Metcalf about the Midwest's largest piano sale going on now through Sunday right here at Easton Mall. Bill, what's the story? David, we've been contracted by major piano manufacturers to liquidate over 200 pianos and organs at any price. We got all the major brands, new and used, and discontinued models, rental returns, and more. So if people want a fantastic deal, they need to come on out right now and see us at Eastland Mall. Remember, folks, that's the Midwest's largest piano sale going on now through Sunday right here at the former Baby Shop location at Eastland Mall. League Baseball is in your face on ESPN with America's Game of the Week, Sunday Night Baseball, plus single games on Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday night and a Friday night doubleheader. Got it! Opening day is April 6th as the Blue Jays meet the Tigers, the Giants battle the Dodgers, and the Mets take on the Cardinals. An opening day triple-header, Monday, April 6th, live on ESPN. Earlier today in the MAC Championship, Miami of Ohio beats Ball State after getting swept in the regular season. Hail to the Redskins. They're going to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1986. They got swept in the regular season. They come back and they win when it counts. We're not done on Championship Saturday. We're just getting cranked up. John Saunders is going to come in here and try to referee things. The Great Midwest Championship game. Up next, Memphis State against Cincinnati. The Bearcats beat Memphis twice during the regular season. That followed by the WAC. It's BYU against UTEP at 9.30 Eastern time. And then out to Big Sky Country, the Grizzlies of Montana, the defending champs against Nevada, the number two seed. Or back to the MCC after this. Sunbeam easy to 
assemble gas grill. Built for flavor. Built in America. Built to last. Sunbeam. For all the right reasons. It's college basketball's most exciting time. Now you can enjoy the best of the NCAA's championship tournament in this amazing video, One Shining Moment. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Your free video is packed with the biggest thrills, the greatest players, and the finest teams as they battle to experience that one shining moment. You'll be at courtside with the coaches. You'll feel the intensity as the suspense builds when the game is on the line. 18. Call this toll-free number and get out on the court for a thrilling 45 minutes of the best in college basketball, free from Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video and 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. You'll treasure college basketball's most memorable moments. And you'll catch all the miracles yet to come in Sports Illustrated. Now you can enjoy the drink that's been on every Russian space mission. Sputnik, made with 10% real beet juice and 20... Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and go... Alarm, it'll start your day. Alarm, you'll be on your way. Bring in your day. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. ESPN's Championship Week is brought to you by Phillips Petroleum, the performance company, and by Bud Lights. Everything else is just a light. UCLA can clinch the Pac-10 outright. They have a two-point lead over Arizona State. Washington State picks up their 21st win, but they still might not get a bid. And the Big 8 semis, it's a final. Oklahoma State into the final against Kansas tomorrow. Some of you see it at 3.30. Back now to Dave Velocian and Jim Spilarka, though, for the MCC second half. Welcome back to the Queen City, and Evansville is reigning over Butler by 22 at the break. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Willotion, along with Jim Spinarkle. Evansville's played about a perfect game, shooting 68%, and their defense has been outstanding. They usually give up about 68 points a game. They're right down to the 23 mark here at halftime. Done a great job defensively shutting them down, taking Butler completely out of their offense. Butler did not score a point in the last six minutes of the first half. It's been a game of runs all night long for Evansville. The rebound's close, but that's about it after that. All aces. When you look at the shot charts, six layups for Evansville, six three-pointers, so they've mixed a little bit inside, little outside, seven field goals right in that 15 to 8-foot range, so they've really done a nice job of controlling the tempo and getting the shots off that they want. Archibald, the only story really for Butler. Here's Geis, and uh, again, a cold start for the Bulldogs of Butler. Case Beer, the other premier player, terrific night, 18 points. Heisel, 9 off the bench. It's just been all Evansville. Kokenauer, who was shut out, loses the handle, and here comes maybe the first transition game of the night for Butler. That's exactly what they really need here is some easy hoops that are going to be created from their defense. You notice the little difference now in the second half, full court action. There's the D again, good hands. And only the fifth turnover in the game for Evansville. Geis, who just scored the two, has that taken away nearly by Jackson. You have to take the first open shot they have if it's a good one. Whoa, where'd that one go? Quick hands on Reed Jackson, oh, knocked it away. Uh, I don't think that was touched, actually. Maybe not. <laughs> Gary Collier still get out the calm. rosin. <laughs> yeah. Some rosin there. Here's what we were talking about, the great defense by Evansville, making it hard. Nice with full court pressure, and they do beat the time on the 10-second call. K. Spear inside, he's got 20, he makes it look easy, and the lead back to 22. K. Spear with that little crossover that time, little shake, and then pull up on the right baseline. First half, he pulled up a couple of times on the break, from about the seven-foot range in the middle of the paint. I'm not saying this game's over, okay, because there is a whole half, really, in essence, to play. But in the past, the MCC has taken two teams to the NCAA. Archibald has to give it up. And Wilson, who has just been ice cold, can't get it to go. If... Uh, and 
and the block, and that was a good call. If this stays as it appears it will, could this conference take two? Because Butler has won 21 games this year and a win over UNCC, 17th ranked at the time. Get another look at that crossover with a little bit of the move defensively. If, I think if it were a closer game, you have a situation where the two could go. I think they'll look at a blowout, and they may, the selection committee may look the other way. In this case, Butler on the short end of it right now. In the 89 and in the 90, two teams from this league went. It's a good league, rated right yeah. 10th in the country. Larry Collier now feels a little more concerned, although he remains calm. That was the fourth foul on the inside player, Katara Relaford, and this young man is a good field goal shooter. His free throw percentage way down this year, although he delivers there. Yeah, you'll are. Talk, you're gonna talk him the two good good shots right here. He'll drop both of them just as you say that, right? Well, he's shooting 49% on yeah. the year, and he was 60-some percent last year. He's sort of going down, which makes you think it's just a mental thing. He hands them both. Why not? Because when you look at his form for a big guy, it's pretty steady. He's right there. Good follow-through, and he actually held the follow-through until the ball hit the rim and went through the net. 24 points, the biggest margin for the Aces. He's pretty close to on you, too. Bowen, and he is on the scoreboard. His first three. We need a bunch more of that with 18 minutes left to go. Belford and Hoopman doing a little shoving and pushing in the lane, and it continued out the half court. They're still looking for their 24th win this year against five losses, and they've picked off a pretty good team in Notre Dame and in Maryland, and they stayed very close with Arizona in the preseason NIT. Now this is where Evansville can really be patient, use the clock, use the shot clock, wind it down, but their shot selection has been very, very good throughout the entire game, especially in that first half. At the first foul on the little guy, Tim Bowen, the 5'8", 155-pound junior from Los Angeles. Elkins Good stops pull up. and pops. And Bowen, who surprisingly will come down with about three rebounds a game, comes away with it. Well, he's going to get in there and help and fight. We'd like to have your guards sit back in the paint, try to help out defensively. Oh, great job on the defensive end. And they stop the premier player, Archbold. And he struggled. He had 10 points in the first half. He averages 25 a game. So they're looking, Butler is looking for them for him rather to give them a little bit of a lift and if he goes cold on or can't get his shots off they're going to struggle second foul on michael wilson arizona state now uh, creeps ahead of ucla that would be an interesting turn of events no question that evansville can take as much time as they want well, they get off to such a good start, especially Case Beer, really stepped up big time, hitting those three three-point shots, a couple of shots in the lane, really took control of the game right from the start. And, and the nice thing about Case Beer, he had a terrible night last night in the semi, only six points, and he averages 26. And last night, you know, he had his supporting cast. Tonight, the supporting cast is there. They really don't have to be depended on as much as they did last night because of the way he started this ball game. The freshman Jackson now with eight in the game. Evansville has gotten their scoring from just about everybody. That tough play wouldn't go. Now they're running three guys right at arch ball there. Very difficult. That's a takedown. Be careful here. Bodies flying on the other side of the court. That's and a, a foul on the big guy, Sasha Hoopman. It's an excellent call also. Evansville had the numbers going the other way. But they've been bumping. We just mentioned it a little bit. Now watch the legs come up. Here come the legs. See the legs come up there in the trip? That's a good call. Hey, that's a double takedown. Sure is. But that's an intentional one, too. He's going to pull one guy down and trip the other. See, from that angle, you get the impression that he doesn't know that play the second player is coming. And here he comes. <laughs> he takes a look. He says, you're not going down. It looked like dominoes, and this time they knock him down. Well, the officials just have to clear those two and get them away from one another. This has been going on for just about two minutes. Time to step in and separate. Relaford with another. And that may have been called intentional, and that has Barry Collier up and very upset. He's calling for a referee to come over. There is the calm Jim Cruz. Now he's calm. You can't blame him. Oh, and you're up 51-28 going your way 
pretty decent year. Third time in seven years. I guess you could call him a disciple of Bobby Knight. Played there and coached with him at Indiana as an assistant. Putman buries the first. Sasha three for three from the line tonight. All because we told you he was struggling. Nine points in the game, a bunch of rebounds. 16-32 left to go in the contest. 52-28, and Evansville will get it. And you can see the frustration in Barry Collier. Well, those two are still matched up way down the other end of the floor. So we will keep one eye on them. Wilson with the try at the save. He touched the baseline. It'll still belong to the Aces. breaking the press does it all for them look at case bear with that move may have gotten away with a little bit of a skip there for a travel pretty bit good composure though to get it to drop nonetheless in the nba you wouldn't have even blinked that's it never would have looked at that one 22. nice pass and relaford in the tree no but the foul fall on hoopman and that'll be number three on sasha yeah, good job by relaford going right at him Let's go to Chris Fowler. Okay, fellas, we're going to take it out to Arizona State and UCLA in the Pac-10. The Bruins with a win can clinch the outright title, but they're getting a battle right now from Bill Frieder's club. We're going to go to Phil Stone and that old Bruin, the Walt. Final 20 seconds from Westwood, UCLA, trying to win the Pac-10 championship outright. They trail Arizona State by two. Taken away by Matkins. Oh, what a first half we have had here. Matkins, the best defender for UCLA. Good kick out pass to McLean. Shot won't go. Maurice Fowler won't, and we've got a foul. And that'll stop the clock with three seconds left. That's the way UCLA beats you so many times. Somebody will take a shot. McLean, that time, as the penetration by Matkins sets up McLean along the baseline. But keep your eye on Tracy Murray on the right of your screen there. Nobody gets in his way, and he's able to dominate the offensive boards. Good position. Bill Frieder says, something's wrong here, guys. Bill Frieder, who got in an ugly incident with some fans down at the L.A. Sports Arena the other night. Sean Murray is replacing Don Pardon me, Sean Tarver checking into the ball game, replacing... Don McLean. Today at halftime, we'll give you the winner of last week's Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest. You betcha. Murray to the line. He has 12 points and six rebounds. They get 13. He gets the front end of the one and one. UCLA back to within one. That is the kind of first half we have had. Arizona State, four of four from three-point country. UCLA is two of five from outside the arc. The three-pointers for Arizona State have been important, much more important in my opinion though, the dunking exhibition they put on that's really got UCLA back on their heels. So Murray's got a move. We're tied at 46. <laughs> what strength by that's it. Mr. Deal. The end of the first half. It has been a great ball game. UCLA and Arizona State are tied at 46. And USC rooting for the Sun Devils. They would share the Pac-10 title if UCLA loses this game. The Bruins win it outright if they win. Show you one of the highlights for the Sun Devils in the first half, why they've been able to stick with UCLA. Tyus Edney, the little point guard, has his pocket pick. Mario Bennett, the give and go to Lynn Collins back here. He finishes, and you saw the score. It is tied at 46. A fresh and ready John Saunders steps in here to take you through the wee hours of the morning, finishing off with the Big Sky Conference Championship game. Don't worry, Jim and Dick aren't going anywhere. As championship Saturday rolls on, we'll get you back out to the MCC. Our score, Evansville, in control on their way to the NCAA tournament by 28 over Butler. Six years ago, the city of Tampa had crumbling sewer pipes, and they started slip lining them with Drisco pipe from Phillips 66, extending their lifespan from 10 years to 50, and saving millions of tax dollars which Tampa has no trouble finding better ways to spend. Solutions from Philips 66, the performance company.
Pizza Hut for a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings. Get a supreme for $7.99 and any other pizza for just four bucks more. So hit the hut tonight and get a supreme deal. <laughs> If you're into working out, Bud Light invites you to get ready for the ultimate workout. The Bud Light Triathlon Series. You can taste it, feel it, know you got it right. Cause everything else is just a light. Just try it. All right, as promised, I have arrived here. I'll take you through the midnight game. Right now, Butler in Evansville. Let's tell you what happened in this game. Parrish Casebeer. Here's a guy you haven't heard a lot about, but what a player. Comes up with a steal, jams it down. Evansville looks like they are headed to the tournament. Let's get back for the rest of the second half to Dave and Jim. Thanks, John. Nice to have you join us. It is 59-33. What a clinic Evansville has been putting on. They've been shooting 71% from the field. Making it happen at the defensive end also. Really playing with confidence right from the first minute of the ball game. Bowen hits his second three in the half and in the game. He's got the six and 59-36, the 23-point difference. And I guess they're going to have to shoot a lot of threes. That's about the only way back in it, although there is 14 and a half minutes left to go in the contest. Butler will obviously try to pressure, as you saw just then, full court, pick up way outside right now. But Evansville, very patient. Bowen upset. He thought he got that clean. But he did he hit with the body on the shoulder. You know, we talked about scoring in the paint in Evansville with a big guy in the middle. They have scored 47 points from the front line inside. Butler only nine. And Butler scored a lot of points last night from the field from way out. Their perimeter game was terrific. It is not this afternoon. And you can credit, I think, a lot of that for the Evansville defense. Yeah, I think so also, and I think they had a little easier time of things because Case Beer got off pretty quickly. USC a winner. And look at what Ohio State did at Minnesota. I really thought Minnesota might be tough at home there. Michigan put together a good win. Case Beer now with eight and a half and 26 in the game. He's right at his average. Another block by Hoopman inside. Well, Hooper had the luxury of getting the block. Jackson did a very good job of bodying up. Heisel ahead of the floor here. Oh, that's going to go the other way, I would think. Oh, oh my. It's not going Grenz or Butler's way. And he better be careful. He just got hit with the T. It's a little late to be careful. I thought he had pretty good position. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good charge right there. That should have gone the other way. That's a good position. He may have been moving a touch, but he had his position clearly established. One time that Case Beer just ran right through him. That's the third on Brenz. Case, Case Beer, who just hit the last two, will go to the line. It's just, you almost feel sorry now for the Bulldogs. Well, that's the frustration of not only getting the call going against you, but you're getting blown out. Things are not going well, but it does not diminish the intensity that you have to play with, even though you're on the losing side right now. And Evansville just keeps pouring it on. 63-38, the lead 25. Well, they have not looked back <laughs> too frequently tonight. That, by the way, was the eighth foul on Butler. So first, he shoots the one and one and gets them both. Now that's three in a row. Have he ever come ready to play tonight? Yeah, he did. And Evansville gets the ball. And the lead is 27. And it's a nightmare for that man, Barry Collier. And just a patient methodical offense now run your sets take the free shots if you have them but don't be afraid to wear down that clock an extra 20 seconds or so it's amazing how the cream rises at tournament time they played twice earlier they were close games they're playing on a neutral floor here and this is as neutral as it's going to get xavier really was the home team and they bowed out last night to butler 
By the way, it'll be the first time Xavier doesn't go to the NCAAs in seven years. What a job Pete Gillen's done over there. You know, the difference also, if Case Beer comes out tonight, I think if he starts out struggling, I think the Evansville team would have been struggling as a group. But he just picked them up as the leader, and they just followed suit. Case Beer. Oh, why not? Wow, is he looking good. Buried three of those in the first half when they really counted. Now it's just stretching it out. He's got 33, and the lead is 30. Bowen to try to answer. Not there. Archbold, he had a jam down, but a foul call on the freshman Reed Jackson from Norris City, Illinois. I like the way he plays. Archbold really struggling a little bit because of the fact that they're clamping down on him. Their leader has not been able to take the shot, get his shots off cleanly. Consequently, they've struggled the entire night. Don't forget coming up, as you see, the great Midwest Conference Championship, Memphis State, and 12th ranked Cincinnati. Oh, Memphis State yesterday, 20-point win over DePaul. Archbold got the roll. He kind of jumps when he releases it. I think it helps him. Terrific free throw shooter, almost 83% on the year. Interesting style, isn't it? Yeah. That little bit of a bounce. The initial shot is good and steady, though. So it really doesn't have an effect because the ball has left his hands. You know, he's a pretty big kid at 6'5", and he handles the ball fairly well. His quickness might be a question mark. You think he can make it to the NBA? Uh, I'm not so sure. I mean, Europe is always a possibility, though. Another three. This one to Heisel. He's got four in the game, all 12 of his points from the way out. Michael Wilson, no. And Hootman had the ball, knocked away. The foul on Hootman. And it was four on Sasha. Well, he's holding his arm, which indicates that there was some contact. You sit here and you look at Evansville, you wonder how far they may go. Now the long shots usually end up with long rebounds. Good hands by Archibald there. That's a good call. Just enough of that left arm pushing away. Shots have to start coming a little bit quicker for Butler right now. The defense, once again, talking out right there the entire night. That time getting called to the strip. 12 and a half left to go in this game, 71-40. So let's talk a little bit about how Sasha Hootman's team and how far they may be able to go. They've got a lot of ingredients as Archibald starts to heat up. He's got eight and a half now and 18 in the game. The thing about them is that they're a young team, too, you know, so you don't know when the real big show comes along how well they'll do. But they needed to win today, and they responded. And they sure the pressure. Did. There's Jackson. He's in double figures now. The key, obviously, is with Case Beer, as it has been all season long for them. I, that's what I, I guess I'm saying. They've got the superstar in Case Beer, the best player in the conference. They've got the big guy. They've got folks who can handle the ball. It would be scary to think if Scott Treffler, probably the best point guard in the league, what he might have done. Timeout on the floor, under 12 minutes to go. It's all Evansville, and they don't look as if they're going to falter. Another wimpy sandwich. Not me. I've got Vintage Farms Deli Loaf. It's got real sliced meat chunks. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. Not just white. Really white. 
not just white. Really white. When you want whiter white, still you... going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Sanderson, a happy man. What a shot. What a finish at the SEC. Here, it's not so exciting, to be honest with you. 31 point difference is, I guess, if you're an Evansville fan, it's exciting. If you like Parrish Case, there, it's really exciting. 11 of 16, 33 points. He's been absolutely amazing, but so is Evansville. They are 8 of 9 in this half. Totally under control. Case Beer. Hitting the boards that trip. Not many things he has not done in this ball game. We'll go back to the line. Whereas he has picked up a bunch from there, but just overall doing the job leading his squad. JP Brenz picks up the foul there. He has four. Been a tough night for all of the inside players. Of course, when you have a Sasha Hootman and a guy like Case Beer who plays inside, it's tough to stop him. And this is where Evansville said they wanted Case Beer all night. On the free throw line, he's an 80% free throw shooter. And that is the first free throw this half he's missed. And also the supporting cast did a nice job again. Reed Jackson playing well, Elkins playing well early on in this ball game, taking it to the hole one time, shooting from the outside another. Well, that's on the nice penetration, and Jackson was forced to foul J.P. Brits. He gets a nice high screen, just enough to free him. Good little penetration and dish. So Brenz only two points in this game, and he averages 10. His dad played collegiately at Wisconsin. From St. Charles, Illinois. He was a starter for part of the year. 43 left to go. And the deficit remains 30. There's the double team, and uh, Case Beer's always thinking. Calls for the quick timeout. He is always in control. It looks like he's not playing hard. Believe me, he's just a thinking man's basketball player. We're back in Cincinnati in a moment. Agatha, darling, your garden is looking particularly lovely this year. How did you ever achieve such gorgeous colors? I've been planting with ideas from the original Evansville Yard and Patio Show at the Green Convention Center. More than a hundred booths with displays that are simply breathtaking. Designer backyards that are absolutely ideal. Sounds like quite an exclusive affair. It is. Three days only at the Green Convention Center. The original Evansville Yard and Patio Show, March 20th through 22nd. It's absolutely inspiring. comes next, you may ask yourself, how can it change even more, you may wonder. It was only a few years ago, wasn't it, that television was just four channels. Today, thanks to cable technology, it's over 40. Technology which is taking us into the future and bringing us tomorrow. Whatever in the world it is, tomorrow will bring. like those seniors are at it again at the Vintage Arco Invitational, Friday through Sunday, live on ESPN. Wow, what an awesome week of college basketball. Did you see the jamming last night? And look what's still to come every night. Hey, time out, baby. Energizer Battery Championship Week. It keeps going and going. Hey, let me out of here. There's a game on ESPN I want to see tonight. Welcome back to Riverfront Coliseum, the MCC Championships on Championship Weekend. Evansville by 30. They broke away 6-0, and they have never looked back. Nice to have you with us on ESPN. I'm Dave Veloshin along with Jim Spinarkle. Really and truly, the Aces have played this way all night long. Eight of nine this half. What about 90 percent? Jim Cruz mentioning he's been quoted as saying, win or lose, he felt his team was good enough to get into the NCAA. I don't think he has to worry about that too much right now. No, he's got the tie, I think, just about undone over there. Look at the spin by Jackson, and the freshman is having a good time. He sure is. That's that little lift that the supporting cast is given to 
Case Beard tonight, and the big guy, Huffman in the, in the lane. That's the biggest lead, by the way, at 32, and the, the baby face of the group, Mark Heisel, the sophomore, picks up foul number two. That's the seventh team foul now on Evans. It's a tough guy, Jermaine Geis. We saw the recovery on that nasty fall. We'll go to the line. He's been quiet tonight, averaging 12 and has only seven. Well, there has not been any quit at all in the Butler team right now, considering the fact that they're really getting toasted pretty good here. But the effort on the defensive end is still very strong and aggressive. They'll need to be. Long way to go. They're starting to run out of time. Yeah, backdoor is just really being set up right now. Every time the high defense comes out, especially on the wings. Archibald a little over-aggressive that time. That's where you work the shot clock down to 22 seconds. Really don't have much choice right now, but to start grabbing. Normally, you want to move the feet first, but the grabbing becomes more apparent. When you're down as many, you have to try to free the ball up, flick it, keep it alive. Wilson in, Taylor out. You know, as hard as Archibald is playing, that's his first foul this evening. Some guys do it so efficiently. Yeah, you know, that's the ability to use your body to play the angles on the floor. It's all angles. North Carolina over Florida State today. Finally got their number, and there's a big win. Georgetown, always tough when it's tournament time. One wouldn't go for Jackson. Big East has been up for grabs all year long, that's for sure. Good move by Archibald. It's just not there. But look at the follow. That's good. You know, shooter usually knows. First one to know if it's going to miss. And he had a good range on it. Good follow up there to just put it in, lay it right back down. I think you're right about the shooter knowing because as soon as he released that thing, <laughs> he was headed toward the board. That was uh, one of the few mistakes in terms of uh, turnovers by Evans. Haven't been many though, huh? Jim Cruz is unhappy about the one turnover. <laughs> He's got to yell about something. He's up 30 with 10.20 left to go in this game. He's starting to make his reservation for the big dance. Pull the timeout, make him run some sprints. Owen, who has scored eight here in the second half, cuts it to 28, so at least they're over 30. Got to start passing the ball a little bit. There it is. So they can just spread the court right now, and that's what usually sets up the back door. And now you start to think, where will Evansville be placed? What seating would they get winning this tournament? How's that for a tough shot? Pretty impressive. Well, he's going down hard on that one also. And still had the presence of mind to put it down. Just 35, that's all. A mere 35. Owen with the air ball. Who do you think is there for the rebound? And now he's going to go coast to coast. And he draws the foul. And he did that beautifully, too. I think he could have gotten by Bowen, but he saw two free throws coming. <laughs> the ability to read the offense, the defense, rather. Watch how he takes the step across to his right now to cut the defensive player off. That's just intelligent basketball. I think he starts to fall before he's touched, too. Yeah, he probably did a little bit. You're right. Hey, you got to be a good actor to be a great player, don't you? That's what they say. It helps. Hootman back in. Jackson takes his seat on the bench. And there's the, the young man who is an 80% free throw shooter just living up to the right. He's got a shot at the 40. Remember his career high 41. It came last Monday night against Notre Dame. He outscored the Irish at the half. 31 at half. 8 of 11 in that game from the three-point stripe. He may not duplicate that tonight, but the fact that the way he came to play, this is a big, big game. He came up awfully big in his performance tonight so far. That's an interesting statistic because they've been to postseason play three times under Cruz. He's been the coach of the year three times, and yet this would be the first MCC title. They won a few, a uh, couple of regular season titles under him. Hey, don't forget the selection special tomorrow. The women, we bring to you first. Why not? Ladies first at 12 theater, 12.30 Eastern time. And then the men. That'll come your way. It's 6.30. And everybody is anxiously awaiting that. And I'm sure there will be some people 
from Butler awaiting you. know Evansville is going to sit there and wonder, well, what seed will we be? How high will they place us? Time will tell. alley -oop, a little too strong. Well, they're getting numbers. Wilson knocks that away right in front of us. They're getting the numbers, Evansville, down the floor because of the fact that Butler and Barry Collier has to come down and really force the action defensively. It really makes for an easy game once you get it past half court with the numbers. If indeed Barry Collier's team is shut out from the NCAA, you got to figure they'll go to the NIT. 21 and 9 they would have, so it would be under double digits and losses. Yeah, I would think unquestionably they'd have an NIT bid sewn up. And again, a great turnaround for Barry. Two years ago, 6 and 22. And look at the job they did this year, tied for second in the conference. Evansville, the regular season champion, and sure to be the postseason king, too. There's Case Beer again. That three wouldn't go. Hey, he's only got 37. He's only human, too, I guess. That was his worst looking shot of the night. And his worst looking foul. Foul called around just four. Slice that from the game footage, and he's got a perfect game almost tonight. 8.33 left to go in the contest. 79-48. And UCLA creeps back in front. That's been a great game. And look at the final there with Arizona falling. That's only, by the way, that miss by Case Beer was only the second miss from the field in the second half by Evansville. They are 10 of 12. They shot, what, 69 or 68% in the first half, and they've improved upon that in this period? That's just amazing. Yeah, and the difficult thing about that, too, is when you're, I'm sure Butler was saying at halftime, they probably as a group were saying, hey, they cannot come out and do any better from a field goal percentage standpoint. Let's just hang in there. Maybe we'll get lucky. Not quite tonight. Uh, just a, about a flawless performance by the Aces and when here, they needed it, too. And here you see how well coached they are also. The patience, the discipline on the offensive end. Oh, oh I hope everybody's okay there. Case Beer picks up his fourth foul, and there was a strange twisting from that young man, Michael Wilson, when he landed. And the reason being, when the ball is up for grabs, Case Beer, with his effort, see where he comes from? He comes from right to left. And with Wilson going up the floor, that's the one you have to be careful with. Yeah, that, that almost looked like a crossbody block in a football yeah. game where you see a knee injury. And let's hope now that that's not the case here. They go to work on Michael Wilson, who really has had a terrific tournament until this game. He had 21 against Detroit. He had 17 last night in the, really an underdog role against Xavier. They were the hometown ball club. His hand clearly on the right ankle. Wilson, a senior from Kokomo, Indiana, who is really their best offensive player, too. Oh, I'm glad to see him get up. That, that, the way he went down, it looks scary. Yeah, especially with the way Case Beer comes across. You know, unintentional, obviously. I think the tie-up on the ankle, which... I mean, that can give you some problems also, but you prefer having an ankle go on you than with the knee. That looked a whole lot worse than it looked that hasn't turned up. There he is. He's okay. Probably through for the night. This Butler bunch is tough. You saw that terrible fall by Jermaine Geis and now the twisted knee by Michael Wilson. In the meantime, Archibald tries to add to his total. He's had 11 in this half. Talk about leading a team offensively with Case Beer. How about him though with the effort going for the loose ball, making the effort on the dive, up about 30 points, and he's hitting the floor like that. Says a lot. Sure does, because he, I mean, definitely doesn't have to do that. This no, game not, is pretty well wrapped up. Yeah, not in that situation, but it's good to see. Extended offense here. You know, it, this young man who's got the ball now, Todd Coconut, he's had a quiet night. He's been shut out. He averages nine points a game and really leads the team. And they're, they're destruct, just uh, destroying Butler with really a quiet night for one of their real cocks. Well, the thing about him that I thought defensively, he did a very, very good job tonight on Archibald. Let's go back to the studio and Chris Bauer. 
Well, Chris was here most of the day, but we fooled you. I'm in the seat now. John Saunders, Butler in Evansville. That one under control, but right now to the Pac-10. UCLA trying to clinch it today. Bill Stone and Bill Walton. Bill Stone along with Bill Walton. 15-03 to play in the game at Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles, where the Bruins, after their first outright Pac-10 championship in five years, leading the Sun Devils of Arizona State 56-51. The game was tied at halftime, 46 all. The Bruins have come out in his own defense to start the second half. Very Altner picked up a foul over the top of McLean. This long shot from the corner. That's Faulkner's second foul. Not much contact there. Faulkner, though, not in serious foul trouble. That's just his second. Edney across the timeline now to Tracy Murray on the wing. Edney works off the pick by McLean, unable to get him the basketball. McLean wants the baseline now. will kick it back out. Butler. McLean takes a step around. Faulkner puts it up. Rattles the iron shot. Will not go. It is out of bounds to the Bruins. <laughs> Don McLean is very upset. That's a give me shot for him. What a great first half for McLean. 15 points. He's got the basketball. And McLean's got two more. 19 on the game. He's going to miss playing in this building. Faulkner not doing a good enough job defensively keeping McLean inexcusable to for the other team's top scorer to get wide open on a baseline out of bounds play. Montana over Edney. That shot won't go either, and McLean picks it off the glass for the Bruins. Edney wants to run. What a difference from the first half to the second half for Arizona State. Mitchell Butler works along the baseline. Every shot in the first half for Arizona State was basically a dunk, except for the four three-pointers they made. In the second half, they're shooting from long range. Exclusively from the wings or the dead corner, UCLA is able to get out and transition offense. 13-20 to play in the game. Bruins with a seven-point lead. They had a seven-point lead in the first half. Only to see the Sun Devils wipe it out. Six seconds left in the shot clock. Tyus Edney fills it up from three-point range. The biggest lead of this ball game is 10 now for UCLA. We will keep you updated on that game. UCLA with a 10-point lead. As you know, if they win it, they wrap up things in the Pac-10 and likely a number one seed in the West. Let's update one other game that's in the Southwest Conference, Texas Tech and Texas. Texas, the number one seed, and a team many people like to pull off some surprises, perhaps while they get to the tournament. P.J. Tyler, baseline move, up and with the jam. It's early. They lead it 14 to 12. Right now, let's get back to the MCC. Butler in Evansville, the Dave and Jim. Thank you, John. Here, it's pretty much the same story. Evansville on top of Butler, 83-54, the winner of this MCC championship on their way to the NCAA. And a great night for the freshman, Reed Jackson. 16, his career high, 17. So he came to play today. Relaford couldn't get it to go. That's Archibald in on the tip. He's had a great tournament when you really add it up. Not only so much with playing with the scoring the points, but just overall floor. Po boys that he's had on the floor really helping out, especially when Case Beer has not been on the floor. That man's ahead. He sees another <laughs> turnover, and it frustrates him. 84 56. I'm really impressed with the way Evansville continues to play tough. Archibald hasn't given up, though. Again, Butler with that full court pressure, easy to beat. With the first wave going by it gives you the numbers, and then Evansville just been pulling it out for the last 10 minutes or so. Chaka Chandler in the game, he was their sixth man. He injured his knee earlier in the year, and he's just coming back, and so he'll be a force to be reckoned with come NCAA time. Jim Cruz, I don't think wanted that shot that quickly. He hasn't played for a while. 
Poked away. It's saved right into the hands of Pocono. And now they'll slow it down a little bit, one would suspect. About five minutes and 20 seconds still to play in this game. And nice with the steal. Good job. A little sneak up by Geis. A long night, but the effort has been there still in the second half defensively. Hard to figure what happened here. Quick start by Evansville, 6 nothing, and there's a nice three. I think it was just a building process, too, Dave, when you look at it. They won twice against Butler this year. They come out, they start real well, and everybody gets that snowball effect going. The confidence level rises. I'm sure they didn't think it was going to turn out this big for them. I don't think anybody yeah. did. Everybody we talked with thought this was going to be a game that would go down to the wire. It would probably be in the 60s. And that is where Butler is. But nobody would have thought that Evansville would score 84 points. And really as easily as they did tonight. Coming out, Case Beer in particular, a big, big night. Archibald second, and he'll uh, go take his seat on the bench. Fifteen in the second half for Darren Archibald, 25 in the game, right on his average. And Elkins, who is the hometown hero from Evansville, Indiana. This is the final game for Darren Archibald in a MCC contest, anyway. Not a good feeling. Senior year drifts away. Oh, and a free. Bowen hits his third in this half. He's got 11 in the game. Just a matter of time, though. I would talk to Terry Holland about that last week. Terry said, you know what? It is hard at the moment, but everybody's career comes to an end sometime. Oh, yeah. It's just that when you do it, I remember when we lost, in, uh, when I was a senior, we lost to St. John's down in North Carolina. There is a major pit that hits your stomach. All of a sudden, the realization that, hey, this is really over. They've just pulled down the curtain. Was that tougher than the loss to Kentucky in the final of the NCAA? Uh, I knew you'd bring that one up. I knew you'd bring that one up. They always replay that game around this time also. Yeah. It was a classic game, the goose. Gibbons with all those points. And there, Katara Relaford will leave the game with his eight points. Had trouble with fouls in the semi, but it worked out okay for his teammate against Xavier last night. He's just a sophomore, though, right here in Cincinnati. He came home, and it was fun for two nights. Case Beer, 38 points in the game. There's a key number, too. The number 12, the attempts that he's had at the free throw line helps to set a tone for him, even though he started out burying the long shot at three three-pointers from long range in the first half. The fact that he gets to the line is so important. Look at Allen get up high. Everybody getting into the act. Bobby Allen just in the game, a junior from Downsview, Ontario. So there's a couple of players from away from this country, hail from foreign parts. Now the loss hurts. You see it in their faces, but now the NIT is not so bad. That's for sure, and who knows? Stranger things have happened. Yeah. They may sneak in some way. Well, the thing about it, I think it's probably more disappointment than anything in a big game like this. The last thing you want to do is come out and be really flat. Yeah. I think it was a combination of the fact that Evansville came out very, very quick. They were the furthest thing from flat. Butler just couldn't get off, you know, to a good start. It just snowballed for them. Guys, no, and what do you think? Case beer sense for the basketball the magnets ends up coming his way constantly but you create that as a player though Jim Cruz up and telling Case Beer exactly what he wants him to do just eat the clock up 20 on the shot clock right now well, they'll take it right down to 10 just about try not to force the action but get get a shot in 10 seconds good luck allen with the good fight now it really paid for the pass you cannot do it any better than that though when you have the big lead just trying to build the clock that shot was taken with eight seconds left 
Southern Miss on top of UNCC early. And Texas flexing their muscles just a bit. We talked about the points that Case Beer had as he leaves to a standing O from the Evansville fans. The 39 points. How about 10 rebounds to go with that? What a night for that young man, just a sophomore, the MCC player of the year, leading rebounder, leading scorer, and he, he did it all the night, too. Sure did. Timeout on the floor, 90-64. What a night for the Aces. I'm State Farm agent Jeff Libby. One of the most gratifying parts of my job is helping young parents, people who are just beginning to understand what life insurance is all about. Young couples don't need a sales talk. They just need to talk to someone who understands them and their life insurance needs. Now, I know what that promise of security means, and I don't believe there's a better promise a parent can make. State Farm sells life insurance. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? What's cooking? Well, sir, the Wild West has returned to McDonald's. Oh, you don't say. Uh-huh, so you could start the day with a hearty combination of tomatoes, peppers, and sausage in our 99-cent breakfast burrito. Oh, no. And stop back later for tender strips of grilled chicken with fresh tomatoes and cheese in our 99-cent chicken fajitas. Come on, wishbone. Pull your horses. I'm still talking to the side. What you want is what you get at McDonald's.